given that you got a project where you are supposed to work with a combination of signed and unsigned data. If you are working with signed and unsigned data, it is very important to have an extremely good conceptual clarity of how signed numbers work and how unsigned numbers work. Because if you try to do things like comparison or multiplication or things like that, you will not get the results you expect when you mix up working with signed and unsigned numbers. Now, if what I'm trying to tell you is confusing you, very soon it will be crystal clear when you take a look at this particular example. So what I'm doing here is I have created a small sample code snippet. In that I have declared a signed int i whose value is minus one. So when I declare a signed int i as minus one in two's complement, minus one is going to be simply represented as a number of ones with the leftmost digit being one indicating it's a negative number. Now unsigned int j is 100. So 100 is going to be represented like a normal positive number like this. This is 100. Now common sense tells you minus one is lesser than 100. Okay, that's all we know in maths. But if you write this particular code in C, you say if j greater than i, printf 100 is greater, else print minus one is greater than 100 you'll be surprised it is going to print this else part. It is going to say minus one is greater than 100. There is a very good reason for it. This has got to do with implicit data type conversion. So if you look at it, the capacity of unsigned int is bigger than signed int. Therefore, the int gets promoted to an unsigned int. Since an int gets promoted to an unsigned int, what happens now is, 100 no problem but minus 1 internally is stored as a series of 1s assume it's just a 16 bit number for this fellow 100 after this one everything is going to be 0 but for this fellow almost all the digits are going to be all 1s now when this is minus 1 is converted into a positive number because in signed there is nothing called unsigned there is nothing called sign this will turn out to be a very huge unsigned number. So when you're comparing this unsigned number with 100, obviously this is going to be bigger because now it is not treated as minus one. It is treated as a signed number, which is very big. Therefore, you're going to get a result like minus one is greater than 100. So be careful when you're multiplying signed with unsigned, when you're comparing signed with unsigned, you will not get what results you expect unless you really know what you're really trying to do because internally, negative numbers are represented with two's complement and when two's complement numbers are compared with unsigned when you promote this fellow this becomes like a very big positive number because this is going to be a really huge positive number when you convert it from binary to decimal that's why it's going to say minus one is greater than 100 so a few things you really need to remember the first thing is suppose you are doing an assignment okay let me explain what i mean by that now I have a variable of the type float. Let's say I have got float as say float, uh, let's say x is equal to 333.333 into 10 raised to 24. Just giving an example. All right. And I have got int i is equal to zero. All right. This is a really huge floating point number. Assume that the capacity of integer on that machine is only two bytes. So integer is only going to be 32,767. Now the problem you're going to have trying to do anything here is if you try to say i is assigned the value of x, this is a real big number, okay? It is goes beyond the capacity of the integer. So there'll be a loss of data and that loss data only will be assigned to i. So what it's trying to say is truncation will occur during assignment if a float variable or a higher data type is assigned to an int. Similarly, if you have a long long double and you assign it to a float, there is a good chance you may lose data because the data type of float is lesser than long long double. So the moral of the story is lower type can be converted to upper type if upper type on the LHS of the assignment. Suppose I was 32,767. I could easily say X is assigned the value. Sorry, I could easily say, yeah, X is assigned the value of I. This is not a problem because X 
as a floating point number has more capacity than i which is an integer which has a lower capacity so the moral of the story is lower data type is converted to the upper data type if the upper data type is on the left hand side of the assignment here the upper data type x is on the left hand side of the assignment i which is of the narrower data type is on the right hand side of the assignment that's why it gets promoted to the upper data type so the moral of the story here is certain points you got to remember it makes more sense to convert integers to float since integer value can be held in floating point numbers but not the other way around float may not always fit in an int now another problem if you try to assign a float to int is you may lose the fractional part of the number or the number may exceed the capacity of the integer this session just give you an idea about how to be careful when you're working with signed unsigned numbers how you're trying to mix and work with data types what caution you need to exercise otherwise there will be an overflow and you will get incorrect results which sometimes can be really hard to debug